Hey, good morning, Thomas. So it was February 4th, 2019, when the governor signed that legislation into law to become effective today, July 1st, 2019. And it will affect workers, many of whom have hourly jobs at places like here at the Deptford Mall. The governor hoping to end wage theft and help families better make ends meet. So for most workers, minimum wage goes to $10 an hour, and it continues with an increase of $1 every January until 2024. For seasonal and small business workers, the increase won't come until January and it raises that wage to $10 and 30 cents nationwide. About 430,000 people are paid minimum wage with another 1.2 million working for less than the minimum. That sub minimum group includes workers who routinely earn tips like restaurant wait staff and bartenders, as well as workers with disabilities who can legally be paid less than the minimum. The federal minimum wage had been at $7.25 for nearly 10 years, marking the longest period of time Congress had gone without boosting the nation's wage floor. So that pushed 29 states and 50 cities to say, hey, let's make a change and let's make a difference for these families. So starting today in New Jersey and several other places all around the country, millions of workers will really feel that effect in their paycheck when it does come and show and reflect those changes, Thomas. It's true, Alex, and this really brings hope and optimism for people who really struggle to make ends meet. A lot of people making that low hourly wage, people that might work here at the mall and some of these stores. Well, today is the beginning of change that will come over several years for hourly workers who will be earning a little bit more money. Earlier this year, Governor Phil Murphy and other lawmakers announced a deal to increase minimum wage to $15 an hour. The law is incremental until 2024, so the schedule for wage increases starts today from $8.80 to $10 on January 1st, 2020. That goes up to $11 and there's going to be a $1 increase every January until 2024 when it reaches 15 bucks. So there are a few key exceptions to the law. Seasonal workers, employees at small businesses with five or fewer workers and farm or agricultural workers won't see the bump in pay until January 2020. Tipped workers will also benefit, but the schedule is a little different from them. So today, a sizable increase in pay thanks to the governor and his initiatives to say he wants to make sure families can, of course, afford things in this day and age when, of course, prices continue to rise and paychecks really have been the same for about 10 years. Alex and Thomas. Yeah, we know paycheck to paycheck, things can be tight. A lot of families waiting for this moment. Lauren, thank you. 606. And while they're trying to figure that out, Karen, there's also a very strong warning for people this 4th of July week to let them know that these devices are, in fact, dangerous. SVU is investigating to see if charges will be filed. In the two recent cases, the latest one involves a nine-year-old girl left with devastating injuries. Police say left home alone. She picked up an M80-like device, and they think she tried to light it when it exploded in her hands, causing devastating injuries that left her in critical condition. Police say her father purchased the explosives off the streets the night before the incident. Last week, 15-year-old Ty G. Baker was sitting on a park bench in North Philadelphia when his grandmother says his friends detonated an M1000 explosive underneath him. He suffered severe burns and damage to his intestines. He is seriously injured, but his life could have been taken for some joke, you know, and it makes no sense. These, by definition, are improvised explosive devices. They have, they are not legally uh, purchased, manufactured, or sold in the United States. They're not stable. Uh, as Detective Brooks said, you know, a lot of them are homemade. They're not stable. You don't know when it's going to go off. Just let the professionals do it. Because, unfortunately, I hate to see anybody have to suffer through this again. These things can seriously injure. You can use a limb. You can lose your life. They're no joke. Police and bomb experts say the devices they are seeing in these cases are improvised explosive devices not legally manufactured, sold, or purchased in the U.S. The warning, of course, is that if you want to enjoy fireworks this 4th of July, leave it to the professionals. Investigators say these two incidents come after a 17-year-old was also critically injured. Now they're having to determine whether they will charge uh, anyone in these latest two incidents. Karen?
Yeah, the warning's really strong. Really do not buy them. Do not use them. They are dangerous, and investigators want people to know that this is really serious because charges could come as a result of these life-altering situations. Last week, 15-year-old Tyji Baker was minding his own business on a park bench in North Philadelphia. Moments later, an explosion after a friend detonated an M1000 device under the bench. The soon-to-be high school sophomore suffered severe burns, major injuries to his intestines, and underwent a seven hour surgery. After that tragic event, another young person critically injured, a nine year old girl left home alone, got her hands on a homemade device. Police say her father purchased off the streets. Investigators believe that she tried to light it when it exploded right in her hands. In both of these cases, these kids suffered greatly. People need to be held accountable for the things that they're doing, whether it's a child or adult. If it's an adult giving these kids these things, they need to be held accountable for it also. Let the professionals handle the fireworks. Don't. It's, everybody thinks it's not going to happen to them. It does. It's going to happen to you. you don't, they're very, um, they're not stable. You don't need these things to have fun with. You don't. Get the glow in the dark necklaces or whatever. You don't need fireworks. You can see the fireworks from Penn's Landing, from the art museum, from uh, the parkway. You don't need to sit there and actually hold them yourself. Don't hold them, don't buy them, don't use them, especially when they're purchased off the streets. They are beyond dangerous, and more important, they're illegal. Bomb experts say let the professionals handle the fireworks this 4th of July. Also last month, a 17-year-old suffered very serious hand injuries after mishandling explosives. So now investigators might have to add more tragedy for these families when they have to charge one of these adults in these cases. They're still looking into the details to determine if and when those charges could be filed. Alex and Thomas. Yes, and it's really more than that. It's an experience, guys. If you have not been to the Borgata in more than two years like I have, you are missing a lot here, including a piece of sports history, a check written by Babe Ruth, included in that $40,000. What else comes with it? I'll tell you coming up after the break. So we sent Lauren Johnson to the Borgata with $40,000. Check your pocket, Lauren. I don't have 40 oh. grand. I already checked my <laughs> bank account. I am not going to be the lucky person. But listen, if you've not been to the Borgata lately, they've made some changes here. So I'm standing kind of out of the high stakes poker area, that room there. And if you're familiar with that, right across the hall from there next to Wolfgang, we've got a new space. Mike, our marketing manager. What's up, my friend? Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, where are we? We are at Moneyline Barn Book at Borgata Atlantic City. You're going to unveil it for everybody uh, yeah. who's watching Fox 29 this morning. Look at this space. You guys really did a great job with this. Thank you very much. Talk about it for me. So it's obviously an exciting time for us. Uh, we opened the money line in level one this past weekend on Friday. Big parties. Uh, huge party on Friday night. Uh, a lot of folks show up for a VVIP event. Be a name dropper. Tell me a few. Uh, so we were very lucky to have Shaquille O'Neal here on Friday night. Nice. Um, and he was also DJing at our club as DJ Diesel and Premier. Wow. Awesome time. And then Saturday, we had a lot of uh, sports celebrity athletes here as well. So from I'm Mike Schmidt to Lawrence Taylor, uh, we had a great lineup on Saturday. This is a very visual place, as it should be when you're showing off sports, right? 20, more than 20 TVs? Yes, over 20 TVs. Uh, the big one right over here is one you cannot see at home. It is 12 feet by 40 feet. Uh, it is the, the definitely the marquee TV in the space for sure. And here at the countertops at the bar, you just pull right up and play. That's right. We have a, a football-shaped bar over 35 feet of marble, uh, 19 slot units built into the bar, smoke-free area. Now, this is attached to level one, a little bit more quiet cocktail area over there, correct? That's correct. We wanted this space to be more than just a sports book, so we had the concept of adding level one to the lineup. Uh, so it's a very, it's a great space with a fantastic cocktail menu, craft cocktails. It'll be a great nightlife destination as well. I love it. Clean enough in there and get, get ready for the day. That's it. Now here's one thing that's happening over at level one. There's something for $40,000 on the menu. It's called the Bambino. That is correct. Named is after correct. Babe Ruth, right? That's right. What That's is right. it exactly? So when we were making plans to open this space, we really wanted to find a way to showcase one of the great American athletes in our time. Yes. So we came with the idea of the Bambino. So it is a check that we were able to find uh, that Babe Ruth himself wrote to his wife, uh, to his wife Claire at the time. Uh, it comes with a long pour of 1940 Macallan. 
and it's displayed in a 1920s Victrola record player. You have to pour it neat. You can't add half pour it neat. <laughs> you can, but that would be a waste. Well, that would be a waste of very expensive whiskey for sure. And why did you guys decide to pair all these items up? I know, I know he uh, loved music. I know he loved his uh, Macallan. And then you found that check, and it was actually written by him, not that's his correct. secretary. That's correct. It's it's in mint condition. It's got a gem score of 10. Uh, so that's what's special about it. it was written by himself versus someone else working for him this time. Now, Mike, if someone says to you, Mike, there's no way anyone's going to buy $40,000. Come on. Well, we have a lot of Yankees fans that come to Borgata. A yes. lot of our folks come from New York, so I'm sure someone will be very lucky to take this home. Uh, we have a lot of players that find their way into some money when they come to Borgata at times. They get very lucky. So people want to take home a piece of American history for sure. And it's so cool that you guys sort of piece these things together to make it one big experience for someone for $40,000. That's right. That's right. It's more than just buying a check or buying a drink. It's the whole experience together. I love this. And what a cool record player. Yeah, it's awesome. Isn't it? We're very right. excited. So big. Oh, you have to tell me this. His granddaughter was here over the weekend. Yes. Linda was here. Uh, she did such a great job. She engaged with customers for about eight hours on Saturday. Wow. Signing autographs, sharing some stories about her childhood. She really did a great job. It was amazing. So you said this space is going to be more than just football Sundays. People are going to, it's a destination. Correct. There will be a reason to be in both Moneyline and Level 1 seven days a week. It's more than a place than on football Sunday. So we're really excited about this space and how it activates. Thank you for giving us a tour. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming. To make sense of all of this. Let's get to Lauren Johnson in Camden this morning. Lauren. Hey there, Thomas and Alex. So, a calculated plot to entrap. That's how the police chief here in Camden describes what happened in this case. He says he does not think it's random and he thinks it was very deliberate. They found the body here late last night on Liberty Street, two days after authorities say Curtis Jenkins III was kidnapped. Earlier in the evening, family and friends gathered for a vigil with the belief their hope, faith, and prayers would bring him back home safely. There were a lot of tears and hugs as loved ones tried to remain positive, but it was hard knowing police had made an arrest earlier in the day. A 32 year old man was charged with kidnapping and assault, but police wouldn't say much on how he became a suspect in the disappearance. But we know it could be linked to Curtis Jenkins side hustle of cooking and selling food. Apparently he was filling an order and making a delivery on Sunday night. Police told us he was last seen around 1115 that night walking on Congress Road. Nearly 48 hours later, his body was discovered here on Liberty Street. Before that announcement, though, his grandfather, who also happens to be the city council president here in Camden, spoke with us. Curtis go to work every day. Curtis has a job. He works downtown City Hall at, uh, in the clerk's office, the county clerk's office. Kurt likes to cook. Uh, Kurt cooks a lot and advertises on Facebook and takes orders. And apparently, that last order he took it the last time he was seen. There's a lot of people that know and love him, and it's just, uh, oh, it's got me stressed a uh, big time. Uh, I mean, you see this all the time on TV. You never expect it to happen to you. The elder Jenkins said he spoke to his grandson earlier in the evening Sunday when he called to offer him some food. He politely declined that offer, and the next morning he learned of his grandson's disappearance. Chief Scott Thompson released a statement yesterday saying, based on the information from the investigation thus far, we do not believe this was a random act, but rather a calculated plot to entrap and abduct the victim. So we're trying to find out more about that suspect that they have now in custody here in Camden County. And we're going to find out more from the prosecutor's office a little later this morning. So Alex and Thomas, not sure if police were led here by that suspect since he was in custody earlier yesterday or if something else led them here. Still so many questions in this investigation. Well, we want to get back to this morning's developing news. A missing 20 year old man has been found dead in Camden, and we just heard from the victim's father. Lauren is out there. Camden spoke with the father moments ago. Lauren. Hey there, Thomas and Alex. So, the update uh, kind of grisly, very sad news we're hearing from the father. Uh, what we're told is around 10 o'clock on Sunday night, the father said he left the home that he shares with his son. He went to Sugar House Casino. His son left with two friends and his girlfriend to go make a food delivery and drop the two friends off. At some point, he never returned to the car. So after about 20 minutes, they called his father. He was on the tables at the casino, didn't answer his phone immediately. When he finally got those messages,
charges, he instantly called police and reported his son missing. He thought at that time something was not right. He says he was awake all night Sunday into Monday morning, and at some point uh, between those hours, he gets a phone call from the kidnappers. He also got a picture of his son tied up. Uh, he reported that to police. Police now investigating that. He told us he couldn't even show us a picture of his son because they do have his phones as they conduct his, that investigation into the son's uh, whereabouts. But he says that his son was in the Fairview section of the city and was brought here to this house on uh, this abandoned home on Liberty Street. So that's where the scene was this morning when we arrived here. Police here, uh, of course, bringing evidence bags out uh, throughout the night and into the early morning hours, trying to piece together this crime. And what we do know is that at some point yesterday, a 32 year old man was arrested for the kidnapping and for aggravated assault. So it all makes sense now that that was because they were able to connect those pieces from the father's cell phone. He has not been charged yet with murder, but he is in the custody. To be here in Camden County um, of authorities. We do understand that the prosecutor's office will release more information today, but this sounds like a very personal story, very tragic, and of course, very sad for this family. Alex and Thomas. Yeah, of course, very is. difficult to process. Right. Hello. Can you guys believe that they're working so hard in here, quietly working? And they don't even have air. They're just working hard. Um, Joe Termini yes. joining me this morning. There's one person visibly missing from this kitchen this oh, morning. Oh, boy, you're going to get me in trouble. Where's Vincent? Uh, he's on his way. All right, so brother's on his way. Uh, Nick's over there in the background. He's the guy with the master plan, but he won't give up the secret. That's the trick. So all we know is five tiers, and it's going to be square. That's right. And this is all the work going into it to make it happen. Correct. Tell me about this. So tomorrow you have you have to show up at seven o'clock and get to work. Absolutely, because uh, the cake cutting I believe is at one o'clock. So we are under the gun. All these cupcakes, eighteen hundred cupcakes, need to be set up uh, in our master plan. Yeah. Um, and the cake needs to be decorated in that little time slot. So Nick's hiding the uh, game plan, but he's working hard. Look at him go. I love it. Um, <laughs> talk about how special this is for you. Um, the invitation to be able to do this for America's birthday party. Oh, this is, I mean, it's just a natural fit. Uh, my grandfather is a, was an immigrant. Um, he came over, you know, over a hundred years ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, next year, we're going to be celebrating our hundredth anniversary here as a business. Um, but he had such a passion and a, and a love for this country, for giving him the opportunity to utilize his skills to build something. When we were approached by, um, you know, the, the visitor center to, yeah. to make America's birthday cake, I mean, it was like, it was almost like my grandfather jumped up and down. Aww. So my brother and I made this commitment. We're going on eight years now uh, executing this with the help of Nick and, and our wonderful staff here. And we're going to continue doing it every year. They all have seemed so laser focused. They are not distracted by our shenanigans back here in the kitchen. Um, your grandfather, would he be smiling big today? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, as I said, you know, he just loved this country more than anything. Every day at 12 o'clock, he would play God Bless America on, on the radio. I still remember it. Um, yeah, he's watching over us. How does it make you feel to be able to continue his legacy, his tradition, his love? Oh, well, that's a question that many people ask my brother and I, and you know, we always have the same answer. We'd like to think that he would be proud of what we're doing and continuing the tradition and not, uh, you know, not selling out to, you know, a big box store and continuing that handmade tradition. Um, you know, we're going to continue to do so, and hopefully one day my boys will, will also take on that, that, uh, that tremendous responsibility to keep this iconic Philadelphia tradition alive. They've got big aprons to fill, so <laughs> you guys have a lot of work ahead of you. We will get out of the way and out of the kitchen, but you said this year's design is going to be the biggest and best yet. It is going to be really awesome. Okay, so stay tuned on their Facebook page because Joe says they're going to unveil it all. And Nick might give away the secret uh, tomorrow, too. Uh, Not before then, <laughs> Karen, tomorrow, Thomas, and Alex. <laughs>